verse 17. Please note that as we gather together, we must do everything in our power to set aside anger and unforgiveness in essence the physical condition that we must do everything in our power to leave behind our own distraction and sin in order to focus on the Lord Jesus Christ and I need to state at the very beginning that the very purpose of the church must overcome our sin our physical condition, our lack and if this is not happening then it doesn't reflect on the malfunctioning of the church but rather on your own malfunctioning in that your desire for the things of the world are perceived as much greater than the value of Christ and it is this obstacle that the church must be an instrument in helping you overcome that obstacle being the barrier between God and you lust as long as lust is operating in your life you will be derailed and remain in separation from the eternal realm the purpose of the church is to help you overcome this barrier of lust that separates you from God this is the purpose of the church to help convince you or to point you in the direction of the eternal realm that submission to Jesus Christ can follow so that you can be liberated which is also referred to as delivered from the physical condition in looking at Galatians chapter 3 and verse 17 where it says the new dispensation or the dispensation that was manifested in Abraham was in operation 430 years before the law that is significant enough in itself but the important part of the verse comes in the latter part of the verse where it says therefore the law could not cancel or invalidate or render entirely useless the declaration which was into the New Testament note that the law is in a physical expression it is of the world whereas the declaration is a spiritual revelation that continues to remain unchanged in the eternal realm what the verse is saying is that nothing not even God's own physical manifestation of the works in the world not even the physical manifestation of God's works in the world can alter the essence that remains in the eternal realm that nothing can alter the reality that remains fixed in the eternal realm this is what the verse is saying that anything that is manifestly expressed in the physical realm cannot alter the reality that continue to abide in a
faith that is unchanging. Nothing can alter the essence that remains in the eternal realm. When we speak of the new dispensation or the dispensation referred to in Galatians 3.17 what alters our nature is grace. It is the divine influence or the influence of God on us as we abide in a different time zone because of the system or arrangement called the New Testament that was brought into operation before the physical creation. Of this, all of you by now should be sure one essential element that is implied in the definition but that is not stated out rightly is that the interaction takes place in the eternal realm. The influence that converts us, that changes our nature expressly exists only in the eternal realm. This system or arrangement allows us to receive the reversal of nature which is the changing of our nature from the physical condition. I'd like us to turn to the lexical aids 3806 to see what the experts say that this natural condition is. According to the experts, this condition that we naturally find ourselves in, the condition that we find ourselves in, that we inherited from Adam, is called pathos. Which is the soul's diseased condition out of which the various lusts spring. Epithomia is the act of lust or the desire springing from the diseased soul while pathos is the condition. This is the condition that grace liberates us from. I would like you to turn with me please to Hebrews 13 and 28. Hebrews 13 and 28 where it says in the King James Version text wherefore we receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably with reference and godly fear. Starting with the key word grace in the verse. This verse says we are changed and healed by our interaction with a realm, with a kingdom that cannot be changed or troubled by the oppressor affected by the oppressor. Note that the original Greek word used in the verse and that was translated as kingdom is basilia which means more than a kingdom it means a realm. The first part of what I've just said to you, we are changed and healed by an interaction with the realm and know that this is what grace is, 
define us and know that receiving as used in the verse is in the present tense that we can now receive this realm temporarily it's speaking of the present tense that while we exist in the world in our physical condition that we can receive or experience this realm that is not of the world the word that was translated as whereby was from two Greek words dia and hos meaning through which not whereby but through which that is it is because of grace that we can serve and follow God acceptably with downcast eyes the original Greek word ought to be translated as with downcast eyes and not with reverence to indicate that we recognize the fact of our existing in a state of sin that we recognize our condition and it is not godly fear but rather it is not boldness as some preach and caution that it is because of grace that we can experience God with downcast eyes and caution caution not to pull vault ourselves into a state of false worship or what Paul describes as we worship this state of grace that it is possible for us to receive can only come to us through this experience with Jesus Christ as he shares with us everything that abides in the eternal realm pertaining to our own spiritual creation you have to note that since we receive a realm that cannot be shaken that cannot be oppressed or troubled by the oppressor therefore that our focus should not be on the oppressor we should not be preaching on the oppressor but rather on the Lord Jesus Christ since our deliverance comes to us through an interaction with the eternal realm are you still there? Amen. it is this grace that the church's aim is spreading that's the purpose for our being here that we can spread in Jesus Christ this actual real grace that only abides in the eternal realm that's why we're here that is why we teach this revolutionary concept of doing God's will in the church this is the sole reason for the existence of the church that we are here to see Christ and do God's will according to the declaration that is revealed to us in Jesus Christ this system in which grace operates allows us to receive the reversal of nature to the full extent of an experience of who we were created as by Christ before the physical creation what we desire is a changing of our nature from the physical condition called pathos we exist in this natural condition 
the diseased condition of the soul which is the state inherited from Adam a state or condition where we exist separated from grace this is our natural condition that we exist in a condition where we are separated from God and from his divine influence that only abides in the eternal realm the purpose of the church the sole purpose of the church is to manifest in a physical way the spiritual works that abide in the eternal realm according to the definition of Jesus Christ so that the congregation or the assembly can have access to Jesus Christ and the grace that follows submission the physical condition means that in our natural condition left on our own without interference from God and the Holy Ghost without an interaction with God in the eternal realm we remain in our carnal mind an unchanged nature which is sin I'd like you to turn with me please to 2 Corinthians 5.21 I know some of you are going to have difficulty with this verse. Paul writes in 2 Corinthians 5.21 For he had made him to be sin for us. For he had made himself For he qualified There is no him in the original text for he qualified in sin for our sakes who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him notice that the last part of the verse should end that we might become acceptable to God because of the temporary experience of who we were created as before the physical creation while remaining in the move of God not in him the original text indicates while we continue to remain in the move of God that strictly abides in the eternal realm God was made sin for us who knew by experience knew no sin before something happened that Christ that God became sin for us on two levels God was made sin in the eternal realm that's what the verse says it is what the I don't even have difficulty with this that God was made sin in the eternal realm he experienced our weaknesses as he planned our spiritual creation when he became our individual prototype he spiritually created us in perfection which perfection then had to come into a spiritual connection with sin, weakness and the physical condition as Christ makes us present tense to the perfection of the original spiritual creation to give us the experience of the original spiritual creation so that we can be present tense delivered from the physical condition God was also made sin for us 
in the physical creation when he inherited the sin nature through Mary. This was the cost. This was the cost. What it would cost God in order to bring grace into being. This is what grace cost God. Before God became the prototype, he knew no sin. He experienced no sin. This is what the verse says. He experienced no falling short of the glory of God as he continued to exist eternally in his own glory. But he did, he did it for us to ensure our deliverance. He took on himself in the eternal realm and in the physical realm this experience of the sin nature so that he could guarantee and ensure our own deliverance from the physical condition. This is what Paul meant when he wrote in the verse, who knew no sin. Where sin is referring to the condition, the reality, the prevailing state, and the predominant condition that we naturally find ourselves in. The condition that we all are born in. All because of the decision of Adam, the inheritance of Adam. This is what Paul meant when he wrote in the verse, who knew no sin. A holy God who did not experience sin before had to taste sin in anticipation of what God knew Adam would bring about in the nature of all men because of his disobedience. God would come to experience sin, the physical condition, all our weaknesses combined existing in a state that was foreign to him in the eternal realm and in the physical realm all because of Adam's decision the cost to God was incurred because of Adam therefore God's suffering is calculated and imputed in the judgment of Adam which is also reflected in us if we reject Jesus Christ. The physical condition exists in us when we're left on our own without interference from God and the Holy Ghost without an interaction with God in the eternal realm that we remain in our carnal mind and un unchanged nature that we do not know nor have a real and tangible experience of God and our mind cannot exercise itself in the reality of a world that is not physical. If all you can know and if all you have known in your life are physical things, then know for sure that you do not know God and that there is something amiss in your life. Because to know God is to know of a realm that is not physical since God moves in a spiritual world. Are you still here? We naturally exist in a state if left to our own devices or as per false teaching like water baptism and the world. If we are left to our own devices and our own carnal mind that is outside of God's intended grace outside of God's divine influence then the problem is that our lust naturally binds us to our physical condition our lust represents the shackles that bind us after the Israelites in Egypt 
Why? Because a man in the physical condition is into believing that it is better not to submit to God, that it is a better life in the satisfaction of lust through things that are physical. The reason why you don't submit to Christ is because you believe in your carnal mind that Christ will take away the enjoyment from you. In other words, basically you do not trust Christ and you treat him as if he were the enemy trying to do something good from you, as if he were trying to oppress you. Christ's desire is to give you joy instead of the unsatisfying rule of what appears to be enjoyment. Christ desires to give you life instead of dying through oppression. Christ desires to give you the glory instead of the husks fed to pigs. What is so radical about the teaching of this church is that we say that it is our direct response to a spiritual revelation that comes to us in the person of Jesus Christ that we can find healing that we need to hear from God himself in the person of Jesus Christ that we need submission to Jesus Christ in a direct way in a direct positive response to what he shows us in our heart if we desire to be healed from this condition that appears to be ruling us lust keeps us in the physical condition which is sin outside of grace which keeps us going in the wrong direction away from God towards damnation and the oppressor lust means that we are separated from God lust was introduced to men through Adam and the reception of deception lust locks us up in the physical realm separated from God away from the eternal realm with zero knowledge of this same eternal realm knowledge of the eternal realm is as foreign to us today as it was to Adam after the fall after all the knowledge that Adam had was lost we can escape this ignorance of the eternal realm only through spiritual submission to the spiritual declaration of Christ this is our entrance into the New Testament into the eternal realm and this is why Paul calls it the dispensation of the declaration Ephesians 2.12 our problem is that in our natural condition in the condition that we naturally find ourselves in God has to free us from a state in which we are caught up a state in which we are in where we desire to remain in our state of rebellion we have a desire to remain in our state of rebellion against God this is a desire that God has to persuade us to put behind us in our natural state we desire to remain rebellious to God God has to free us from this desire by the declaration as we hold on to this desire for us to remain the same God has to prize us from out of this realm by persuading us in the declaration that there is something much bigger and better for us if we submit to Jesus Christ who is still here?
The system called the New Testament allows us to receive the change of our nature from the physical condition to the spiritual condition as a free gift by an interaction with the eternal realm. Romans 1.20, please. And starting in the verse before, at the end. For God had showed it unto them, according to the King James Version. For God had showed it unto them. The Greek word that was translated as showed is familiar to render apparent. That makes it quite clear. To make us able to see, in other words. And familiar is from the Greek phaneros, which indicates that the word used in verse 19 and translated as showed is of a spiritual communication since Phanelos is from Fahino which is from the base of frost light which is expressing the nature of a spiritual communication for God had spiritually communicated unto us the invisible things in the move who is with me the invisible things as an incorrect translation for the works of the eternal realm the invisible works the works that we cannot see in the physical realm because they abide in a different realm that God can communicate unto us the invisible works that abide in the eternal realm which were before the material creation. And it says, are clearly slain, which is an incorrect translation for to be ruled fully and to distinctly apprehend which can also not just mean understand but sees that we take possession of these works that we see clearly that are spiritually communicated to us because of our submission and this last part speaking of our submission it's implied, it is understood that we can only experience, we can only seize these works if we submit to Jesus Christ. Starting from the beginning. For God had spiritually communicated in a spiritual move to us the invisible works of the eternal realm which were before the material creation and that these can be distinctly apprehended which can also mean more than just understand but that we also seize or take possession of these works that we see clearly that are spiritually communicated to us And it says in the King James, are clearly seen being understood. Who sees that part? Where the Greek word translated as understood is noeo, 
to exercise the mind that God spiritually communicated the works that abide in the eternal realm to us that we clearly see these works that we apprehend these works that we understand the works and that we seize these works that we become spiritually connected to these works and that we can exercise our minds in these works this is physical evidence to indicate that it is possible for us to interact with works that abide in the eternal realm according to Paul's letters that the system called the New Testament allows us to receive the changing of our nature which is implied in the verse it implies a spiritual connection and it implies the fact of our exercising our minds in the works that existed before the physical creation that the system called the New Testament allows us to receive the changing of our nature from the physical condition to the spiritual condition and that this is a free gift and that it comes to pass by an interaction with the eternal realm this means that we can see into the eternal realm that we can experience the works of the eternal realm that these works transform us and that allow us to be set free from all lust grace is the influence grace highlights and underlines this influence that changes us to the full extent of our nature changing from the physical condition to the spiritual condition by the experience of the original spiritual creation which exists in the eternal realm via the spiritual connection in Christ which makes us acceptable to the Father righteous so that the Father can complete the process of our transformation this is what grace is grace refers to the experience of all being translated to the eternal realm by the Holy Ghost since we are in submission to Christ this is the beginning of our entrance into grace the second part is being connected to the original spiritual creation by Christ and since we are acceptable to the Father that we can experience the Father Turn with me please to 1 Corinthians 3 and verse 16 And before I get into the verse I need to remind you that Paul is writing to a carnal church Paul is writing to a church that is not in God's will Paul is writing to a church that is doing everything except God's will where they are under the influence of the oppressor as they continue to remain in a fixed state of their own lust being unwilling to surrender to Jesus Christ it's a shadow for the wider church today the carol church is a church that is full of fornication and the showing off of gifts know that we cannot show off our spiritual treasures that abide in the eternal realm since these are not physical nor can they be physically manifested in the world the two letters written to the Corinthians must be understood in this context Paul endeavoring to persuade the carnal 
using images that they could understand and relate to. The purpose of the church is to reach towards the reality of the eternal world. This is why we're here, to assist you in reaching the eternal realm where you can accomplish your deliverance in the person of Jesus Christ because of your submission. The purpose of the church is to reach towards the reality of the eternal realm and where the physical world must lead in the same direction, moving away from shadows and reaching towards an expression that always approaches God's world. This word being strictly defined by Christ Jesus. 1 Corinthians 3.16 that says, Know ye not, you are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. Note, that Paul is enticing them. He is encouraging them away from their state of existence in the spirit of the oppressor. And he's encouraging them to stay away from the works of the oppressor. And as such, he writes verse 16. Note that the Spirit of God dwelleth in us but not when we remain carnal. We have to experience this translation into the eternal realm where we can come into contact with Christ so that we can be taken by the Father for our healing. We are the temple of God, but not when we remain carnal, not when we remain in our own nature. We experience God only if we are in a continuous state of submission to Jesus Christ. What is Paul trying to say to them? Verse 17, If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. It's simple. We should conduct ourselves in our daily lives in such a manner that permits us to continue in the spiritual way of the Lord for continued access to our healing that we receive from an interaction with God in the eternal realm. We must conduct ourselves in such a way not to inhibit our translation, not to prevent, but to promote our translation by the Holy Ghost into the eternal realm. The essence in this verse is that we must keep ourselves in a state that is conducive, that would promote, that would encourage our continuing in our same course and spiritual way. It's not speaking of our being a temple for God as we continue to abide in our natural state of rebellion to God. It obviously is not the case. However, this verse can be used by the blind to indicate the fact that God does indeed dwell in us while we remain in our kind of state, which is a lie. 1 Corinthians 6, 19.
1 Corinthians 6, 19, what? Know you not that your body is a temple? It says, of the Holy Ghost. We're not a temple or a vessel. We're not a vessel of the Holy Ghost. We're a vessel for the Holy Ghost so that he can translate us. Therefore, we must live our lives according to this rule. Can't you see that your body is a vessel, that we are a vessel, that we are vessels for translation into the eternal realm. Therefore, we should act according to this fact. And ye are not your own. You can't do with yourself as you think best. We have to rely on the standard and the rules given to us in the person of Jesus Christ. Why? For we are bought with a price. It cost God his own glory to be able to draw us close to him. It cost him. You have to recognize his suffering as a means to encourage your carnal mind to leave what you are and to become what you're not. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 1 For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. Speaking to the carnal church again. Don't you understand that there is more to you than your physical body that you abuse? Don't you know that fact? that there is more to you than what you see. Second Corinthians 5, 4 and it's going to dissolve. One of these days this corruptible body this okio is going to dissolve for we that are in this tabernacle do groan, being burdened, not for that we would be unclothed, but clothed upon that mortality might be swallowed up of life. But it can only happen if you continue to pursue Christ. It can only happen if you continue to pursue Christ in the long run. 2 Corinthians 6.16 For what agreement had the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. Not here. When we are translated into the eternal realm and experience right now that body which we shall become in Jesus Christ referred to in chapter 5. We crave after this experience. As God had said, I will dwell remaining in the move and walk with them. And I will be their God and they shall be my people. And it continues in verse 17. Be separate. The original Greek word was Aphorizo, to set off by boundary, that we be set off by boundary, separated from this physical realm, since we have access into the eternal realm 
wherein lies our healing and that we be not fixed to that we do not become attached to that we be not remain stuck in the unhealed condition, the physical condition Grace is the influence of God on man. It is our interaction with God in a system or arrangement called the New Testament brought into operation before the physical creation to the full extent of our nature changing from the physical condition to the spiritual condition by the experience of the original spiritual creation through the spiritual connection in Jesus Christ to the experience of the Father which experience completes the process of our conversion the original spiritual creation is the centerpiece of God's artwork is the centerpiece of God's arrangement and system evidenced in Romans 8 29 as part of the overall plan to bring this spiritual creation into being this original spiritual creation is the basis for salvation and deliverance without which we can never have a relationship with God you still there this is basic Christian doctrine the New Testament is a system of arrangement brought into operation before the material creation by the blood by the shedding of glory by Christ Jesus and this allows us as men in the physical condition to receive spiritual blessings from God which is the experience of the original spiritual creation which experience makes us of a new quality when we speak of the term new dispensation the term dispensation fixes our attention on the fact that this system is all about God dispensing or sharing out his blessings which is the experience of the original spiritual creation on the other hand when we speak of the New Testament the term testament fixes our attention on the fact that this system has to do with our receiving an inheritance from God who died and left this will and testament there are two parts to the New Testament or New Dispensation and to our understanding of the term the New Testament the first is the fact of there being a dispensation God sharing out his blessings and this can be regarded as an inheritance since our father died and left a will and last testament before the material creation God died at the beginning of the age of the prototype when he shed his glory in order to become our prototype model which was the beginning of the process of our spiritual creation but we can only be regarded as a son and a beneficiary with the entitlement of eternal life in Christ we can only be a beneficiary one who benefits from God's last will and testament if we were spiritually created by God and are continuously submissive to the living God which fact is determined by the reality of the original spiritual creation this means that God must have conceived us for us to be his son 
He must have conceived us after the natural process. We must have been conceived in the heart of God. We must have been thought of by God in a specific design. God knowing all things that will come, already knowing all our shortcomings and failures in this life, He designed this conception of us in a way that our spiritual creation would guarantee our salvation when we were planted in this life. To be considered a son with the entitlement of an inheritance, we must have been conceived in God Himself as seed. A seed that would mature into a spiritual creation through the process of the prophet model and the spiritual creation planted in the physical universe with deliverance and salvation from the physical universe and final settlement in Christ as the perfect creation of God as part of the whole body of Christ and God to be considered a son with the entitlement of an inheritance we must have been conceived in God himself as seed and Christ must have spiritually created us are you still there? there are two parts to the New Testament or New Dispensation and to our understanding of the New Dispensation the fact of it being a dispensation God dispensing his blessing which is the experience of the original spiritual creation and the second part is that this participation in God's blessings makes us of a new quality through the experience of the Father because of the experience of the original spiritual creation the new refers to the fact that the dispensation makes us new of a new quality both temporarily during our life and permanently at the end of our life this new quality is of the nature of the spiritual creation that Christ created in the Rima age and brought to life by the glory of the Father therefore we can say that our inheritance what we inherit is the temporary experience of deliverance the temporary experience of being set free from lust in the physical condition by the spiritual connection to the original spiritual creation during our lifetime and that our inheritance is also our salvation from the physical condition at the end of life on this earth our inheritance is also our being set free permanently from the physical condition to become the original spiritual creation not to experience it temporarily but to become the original spiritual creation permanently settling in that creation therefore our inheritance is the temporary experience of the original spiritual creation which passes for righteousness by God during this life and our inheritance is our permanently becoming the original spiritual creation at the end of this life our inheritance is the original spiritual creation that is brought to life by the glory what else could we inherit from God for us to be able to receive this inheritance God had to die spiritually which means he had to shed his glory in order to create us spiritually he didn't have to die to conceive us but he had to die in order to create what he had conceived we receive our inheritance without cost to us it is a free gift we cannot do anything to pay God back for the fact that he had to create us in order for us to be